Good evening, everyone. Sorry for the long pause. I was sometimes I'm a little bit new at doing this by myself. Craig is not able to make the webinar tonight. So I am your host and I wanted to make sure there was plenty of time for everyone to get on. So welcome everyone. I'm Cindy Clement. I've been learning about and teaching about natural health since 1976. So that's 45 years, folks, and really teaching is certainly my passion. So I'm very excited to spend this time with you tonight. In fact, this format tonight follows the same way we talked about herbal medicine back in September. But tonight we're going to look at the actual foods that are found in Touchstone Essentials products because our food has medicinal properties as well. So let's begin starting with amaranth. The history on amaranth is interesting. It was cultivated by the Aztecs about six or maybe even 8,000 years ago. However, it, it flew under the radar until about 1970 when it was first introduced in the United States. Now, amaranth is a very good source of vitamin C, which is vital to the body's healing abilities because it, it helps to, to process iron and form blood vessels. Vitamin C helps to repair muscle tissue and maintain collagen in the body. Amaranth has been shown in clinical studies to ease inflammation and to lower that bad cholesterol called LDL. Amaranth is very high in protein. It's antioxidant rich, and it's found in organic super protein. Now, when I talk about antioxidant rich, come January, I'm going to be presenting a webinar on free radicals and antioxidants in layman's terms. So make sure you watch for that. Now, apple. Humans in Central Asia in 50,000 BC, 50,000 BC, were eating apples. Apples can help to, of course, they didn't know about cholesterol back then, but today, apples can help to lower cholesterol levels, help to lower blood pressure. There are something called polyphenols in apples, which are these amazing compounds with medicinal properties. And the polyphenols in apples actually help to prevent tissue damage in the body, especially to the beta cells in your pancreas. And those beta cells are the cells where insulin is produced. Now, apples also contain a prebiotic fiber. And by now, you probably know that prebiotic fibers feed that good bacteria in your gut. Now, scientists do believe that the antioxidant and the anti-inflammatory effects of apple uh, might be responsible for its can uh, cancer preventive effects. Now, the skin of the apple contains something called quercetin. Quercetin is also a polyphenol. Now, for those of you who have asthma or allergic reactions, Quercetin is something that helps to regulate the immune system in an allergic type reaction. Apples have also been linked to a higher bone density. Now, where do we get our apple in these products? In essentials. Next, we have black currant. The cultivation of black currant in Europe is thought to have started around AIDS of the 1600s. In studies today, of course, black currant has been shown to reduce risk factors for type 2 diabetes. Black currant has a lot of wonderful nutrients. It has vitamin A, vitamin B1, vitamin B5, vitamin B6, and vitamin E, but its most significant is its vitamin C content. In fact, Black currants contain four times the amount of vitamin C as oranges do and double the amount of antioxidants that blueberries have. 
Now, black currants have a direct effect on your body's inflammatory response, and that helps to reduce joint and muscle pain and stiffness and soreness. Uh, the, the black currants are very high in, in potassium and gamma linolenic acid, which helps to lower your blood pressure. Uh, gamma linolenic acid, which is also known as GLA, helps the cells in your heart resist damage and slows down that platelet clumping in your blood vessels. In addition, one study found that black currants increased heart blood flow, suggesting that black currants may help you recover after exercise. So black currant is found in super green juice. Blackberry, the history of that one dates back thousands of years. It's, it's found that the ancient Romans used blackberries both medicinally and as well as a food as did the Native Americans. Black, uh, blackberries are a rich source of something called anthocyanins, which are very powerful antioxidants. And this is what gives the blackberries their very deep color. Blackberries are packed with vitamin C, they're packed with fiber, they're very high in a, in a mineral called manganese, and they're a great source of vitamin K. Blackberries can help support our oral health, can boost brain functioning, and help protect against heart disease, as well as prevent cancer. So blackberries are found in essentials. Now, the Native Americans were the first to recognize the versatile health benefits of blueberries, using them for medicinal purposes. In fact, blueberries have been a part of life in North America for over 13,000 years. Blueberries are very low in calories, but they're high in fiber, in vitamin C and vitamin K. In fact, several studies have suggested that blueberries reduce the DNA damage, which of course is the leading driver to aging and as well as cancer. Now the antioxidants in blueberries have been shown to reduce risk factors for heart disease by preventing something called oxidative damage to the LDL cholesterol. But their intake is also tied to uh, lowering blood pressure in numerous studies. The antioxidants in blueberries also seem to benefit our brains by delaying mental decline and aiding just really in overall brain functioning. There have been several studies that have demonstrated that blueberries have anti-diabetic effects because they improve insulin sensitivity and help to lower blood sugar levels. And like cranberries, blueberries contain plant compounds or substances that can help prevent certain bacteria from binding to the wall of the bladder, which can help prevent urinary tract infections. Now, blueberries are found in two products. They're found in essentials as well as super green juice. Now, broccoli, it didn't become a popular food in the United States until Southern Italian immigrants brought it over in the early 1920s. But broccoli is a rich source of multiple vitamins, multiple minerals, lots of fiber, and it's an excellent source of vitamin C. Broccoli has several bioactive compounds that can demonstrate that anti-inflammatory effect. And again, inflammation really is the root of all disease. So the more we can keep that inflammation down, the better our bodies will age, the better our bodies will recover and stay youthful. So it's really important to keep that inflammation down. Now, multiple studies have shown that cruciferous vegetables, such as broccoli, 
may have this cancer preventive effect. And the reason they call it a cruciferous vegetable is when you cut a stalk of broccoli or cauliflower or Brussels sprouts or any of those, if you cut them in half, it looks like a little tree, doesn't it? And crucifix was a tree. So the crucifix, cruciferous vegetables, anyway, that's where it gets their name from. Now, again, due to, to broccoli's antioxidant and fiber content, eating broccoli can lower our blood sugar and improve our diabetic control. Now, recent research has indicated that broccoli may even help to reduce various heart disease risk factors and prevent tissue damage to our hearts. Eating broccoli regularly can improve bowel regularity. It helps to feed the probiotics so it maintains a healthy gut bacteria. And we've got multiple animal studies that have shown that the specific bioactive compounds in broccoli can have a protective effect on brain tissue and help to slow that aging process. In fact, the nutrients found in broccoli have been associated with a decreased risk of even dental and oral diseases. Uh, many of the nutrients in broccoli, including things like calcium and vitamin K and phosphorus, they're all necessary for maintaining our healthy bones. And early research, of course, has indicated that the certain antioxidants in broccoli can even prevent some joint disorders. We also have some small uh, studies that need more data, but small animal and human studies that have showed a significant, uh, significant reduction in tumor growth when broccoli is used as a uh, protective therapy against UV radiation. Now, broccoli is found in two of the products, both Super Greens Plus D, as well as Super Green Juice. Now, cabbage, another cruciferous vegetable. It's been used uh, since about 4,000 BC in North China. The first cabbage in the United States in America was brought by French explorers in around 1540s or so. And cabbage became necessary on these long ocean journeys because it has high amounts of vitamin C, which helped prevent scurvy. In fact, the ship doctors actually used sauerkraut to treat the wounds of sailors and to help prevent gangrene. So cabbage contains these powerful antioxidants that can help reduce that inflammation. It also contains insoluble fiber. And insoluble fiber is what keeps that digestive system healthy by providing that fuel for the friendly bacteria and promoting a regular bowel movement. But Along with its insoluble fiber, cabbage is also a good source of soluble fiber, which has been shown to reduce that LDL or the bad cholesterol. It also, uh, cabbage contains pigments, which have been shown to reduce the risk of heart disease. As well, cabbage is an excellent source of vitamin K which is critical for blood clotting. Now, cabbage is found in our super green juice. Based on most historical records, the first evidence of carrots being cultivated as a food crop was in Persia in the 10th century. 10th century. Carrots are an excellent source of vitamin A, but they're a good source of several of the B vitamins as well as vitamin K and potassium. Carrots are a good soy, uh, source of something called carotenoids, such as beta carotene and lutein. And so eating carrots, as you all are very familiar with, are linked to not only a reduced risk in cancer and heart disease, but improved eye health as well. Now, carrots are found in both essentials as well as super green juice. Now, chia was a staple of the ancient Aztec diet, and despite their very tiny size, chia seeds are one of the most nutritious foods 
on the planet. They're high in antioxidants, which of course then hosts various health benefits upon our bodies. Um, in fact, almost all of the carbohydrates in chia seeds are fiber, and this gives them their ability to absorb 10 to 12 times their weight in water. They're a high quality protein, much higher than most plant foods. And just a teaser for next week's presentation, protein is the most weight loss friendly macronutrient because it can drastically reduce appetite and cravings as it absorbs, remember it absorbs that 10 to 12 times their weight in water that bulks up the stomach, which then of course reduces your appetite and cravings. But the chia seeds are also not only protein and fiber, but they're also high in the omega fatty acid, alpha lipoic acid or ALA. They're also a good source of calcium and magnesium and phosphorus. And of course, all these essential nutrients are, are good for our bone health. Um, studies have shown that chia seeds may lower the rise of blood sugar after eating a high carb diet, which of course can benefit people with type two diabetes. The chia seed is found in organic super protein. Now, researchers have found evidence of cocoa dating back several thousand years in South America. Studies suggest that adding cocoa powder to your diet helps improve your attention, your working memory, your cognition, and can even help to restore cognitive performance in people that have been um, suffering from sleep loss. Cocoa contains iron and zinc and selenium, and that can give our immune system a boost. In fact, the selenium in cocoa powder has been shown to limit the negative side effects of radiation therapy in people with cancer. Cocoa also contains magnesium. And folks, this is such an important nutrient. It's a, it regulates our muscle contractions. It helps with our nerve functioning. It also helps to protect our nerve cells and reduces our risk of neurological diseases. Cocoa can also help protect our heart by lowering our blood pressure, improving the blood flow and preventing heart cell damage. Cocoa also contains antioxidants and most plant foods do. And these particular antioxidants help to improve the cholesterol and blood sugar levels in our body and thus reducing our risk of heart disease, cancer and diabetes. Studies have also found that cocoa helps to regulate our energy and our metabolism and then give us that feeling of fullness. Cocoa is found in brain focused fuel. The Wampanoag people across Southeast Massachusetts have enjoyed the annual cranberry harvest for 12,000 years. The Native American Indians made something out of deer meat and mashed cranberries called pemmican. And the cranberries in it helped preserve this high energy cake and made it keep for a very long time. American sailors ate cranberries to combat scurvy. And during World War II, American troops consumed almost 1 million pounds of dried cranberries every year. Now studies have shown that cranberries may have anti-cancer and anti-inflammatory effects, and they may also protect us against liver disease, improve our cardiovascular health, lower our blood pressure, improve our vision, our eyesight, and help to lessen the risk of urinary tract infections. Studies have also shown that cranberries can improve gut bacteria and help control harmful acids in our mouths, which then can help stop cavities, gum disease, tooth decay, and even oral cancer. 
cranberries are found in both essentials and in super green juice. Flax seeds, they are a very rich source of that omega-3 fatty acid, alpha-lipoic acid. So plant-based ALA fatty acids are proven to have heart health benefits and are linked to a lower risk of stroke. Flax seeds contain a group of nutrients called lignans. And these lignans have powerful antioxidant and estrogen properties. So they can help in preventing breast cancer, prostate cancer, as well as other types of cancers. And with so much fiber packed again in such a tiny seed like the chia seed, adding flax seeds to our diet helps promote regular bowel movements and improves our digestive health. And they're their high fiber content of these flax seeds always helps to reduce that, uh, lower that cholesterol level in our body. And flax seed has been shown to, uh, or actually proven to lower our blood pressure. Now, flax seeds too are a really good source of plant-based protein. And they also, because of their our insoluble fiber, they help to lower that blood sugar. So. Flax is going to keep us feeling full longer. It can help us manage our weight by controlling our appetite. Flax seeds are found in both organic super protein and super green juice. Now, archaeological evidence suggests that humans began growing grapes as early as 6500 BC. Grapes contain large amounts of vitamin C and vitamin K, and they're high in, in, in certain antioxidants that can protect us against various types of cancer, including colon cancer, um, breast cancer, and they can even help to protect us against heart disease by helping to lower our blood pressure and those cholesterol levels. Now, even though grapes are high in sugar, they have a very low glycemic index, so it helps to protect against high blood sugar. They do contain several compounds such as lutein and zeaxanthin, and again, those are really important for eye health, and they can, the, the lutein and the zeaxanthin can protect us against age-related macular degeneration, cataracts and glaucoma, all of which are in my family. So a good antioxidant and nutrient for me to be consuming. In fact, my father is blind with macular degeneration. So protect those eyes, folks. Um, grapes contain compounds that help improve our memory, our attention, our mood, and may even protect against Alzheimer disease. They have a lot of nutrients that are important for our, the health of our bones, including calcium and magnesium and phosphorus. And grapes have also been shown uh, to have these beneficial effects against certain bacteria, viruses, and even yeast infections. And the resveratrol, which is an antioxidant in grapes has been shown to slow the aging process and support a longer lifespan. So grapes are found in essentials. Jerusalem artichoke provides a number of vitamins and minerals. For instance, vitamin C, which of course limits the damage to the cells that these free radicals can cause that we'll learn about in January. Jerusalem artichoke also has niacin and thiamine, which are B vitamins that help keep your hair it's healthy and turn the food you eat into energy for your body. Uh, it's copper content and iron content of, of Jerusalem artichokes form red blood cells in the body that carry oxygen in your body where it's needed and then it also contains potassium, which of course plays a role in, in forming proteins in the body. It can, uh, Jerusalem artichoke has phosphorus, which helps to form strong bones and protect our DNA. And most of the carbohydrates in Jerusalem artichokes are in the form of inulin. And inulin acts as a prebiotic 
and it provides a source of food for the beneficial probiotic organisms in our body. Of course, probiotics themselves can help improve our immune function. They can produce vitamins, the B vitamins, and prevent disease-causing bacteria from multiplying. The fiber content of uh, Jerusalem oat artichoke make it a, a wonderful supplement or food for um, reducing high cholesterol, for creating more regularity with our bowel movements, protecting us against heart disease and certain types of cancer. It can also make it easier to control your blood sugar levels and maintain a healthy weight. Now, Jerusalem artichoke is found in three Touchstone Essential products. It's found in Essentials, Super Greens Plus D, as well as Super Green Juice. Kale. Kale originated in the Eastern Mediterranean where it was cultivated for a food beginning around 2000 BC. It was introduced uh, into Canada and then into the United States by Russian traders in the 1800s. And there are numerous cancer fighting substances in kale. It's very, very nutritious and yet low in calorie. In fact, it is, it is kind of named one of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. It can help to lower our cholesterol, which can, of course, reduce our risk of heart disease. It's one of the world's best sources of vitamin K, which is absolutely crucial for blood clotting. It's very high in beta carotene. And again, that's that antioxidant that our body can convert to vitamin A. Uh, kale is also extremely high in vitamin C, and it's a good source of minerals that most people don't get enough of, which are calcium, magnesium, and potassium. Kale also is very high in lutein and zeaxanthin, which are linked to a drastically reduced risk of macular degeneration and cataracts. Now, kale is found in both essentials and super green juice. Lemon was introduced into Spain and North Africa sometime between 1000 and 1200 BC. Lemons, of course, are extremely high in vitamin C and several beneficial plant compounds that help to lower our cholesterol. Lemon actually helps to control our weight. And one of the most common theories about this is that it's the soluble pectin fiber in them that expands in your stomach and helping you feel full longer while also improving your digestive health. Lemon may also prevent kidney stones. As I mentioned, it's very high in vitamin C and, and this helps you absorb iron from plants and that can help prevent anemia. Some of the other plant compounds or chemicals found in lemon have been shown to prevent cancer in certain animal studies. So lemon is found in essentials. Now references to mango are documented in Hindu writings dating back to 4000 BC. Mangoes are extremely high in the immune boosting vitamin C, which of course also plays an important role in helping your body form blood vessels, cartilage, muscle, and even collagen in your bones. Its high levels of antioxidants help safeguard our cells from that free radical damage that we're gonna talk about in January and helps to protect our eyes uh, by reducing, again, that risk of macular degeneration. Mango is also a source of other phyto or plant chemicals that have been linked to anti-diabetic, anti-obesity, and anti-cancer effects. In fact, many of the nutrients in mangoes have anti-inflammatory effects. So people with arthritis or other inflammatory conditions can benefit from mango. They are specifically found to improve constipation and researchers have found that it may even help reduce the risk of colon cancer and help shrink breast cancer cells. 
Mango contains vitamin B6, which is responsible for producing serotonin, which is that neuro, that nerve chemical that helps us with sleep and helps to regulate our mood. And an interesting study that I found in, uh, that was published in a peer-reviewed journal called Nutrients, it was published in 2020, they noted that postmenopausal women who ate mangoes four times a week saw a 23% decline in deep wrinkles after just two months. So let's do it. Good for mango. Mango is found in essentials. Millet was cultivated over 7,000 years ago and then spread throughout the world as a staple food. It's very rich in niacin, which helps your body manage more than 400 enzyme functions in our body. It's also uh, contains, um, as I mentioned, niacin, but niacin is also important for healthy skin and for organ function. Now, while millet is low in simple carbohydrates, it's really high in those complex carbohydrates, which then makes it what's called a low glycemic food. And low glycemic foods can help keep your blood sugar from spiking after eating, which allows people with diabetes to manage their blood sugar levels more easily. Millet is a very rich in dietary fiber, both the soluble and the insoluble. So as we know, the insoluble fiber, and we're talking about millet, but the insoluble fiber is a prebiotic, which means again, that it supports that good bacteria in your digestive system. It adds bulk to the stool, which helps keep you regular and reduces your risk of colon cancer. Whereas the soluble fiber in millet, that always works on heart. So the soluble fiber helps to reduce that LDL cholesterol. Um, which is, of course, a risk factor for developing atherosclerosis. And how it does so is it, this millet turns into almost a gel in your stomach and it absorbs the cholesterol, allowing it to be safely carried out of your system. Now, some studies show that millet can raise your good cholesterol, the HDL cholesterol, and lower the triglyceride levels. And because cholesterol is such a big risk factor for heart disease, getting it more regularly in your diet is going to keep you heart healthy. Now, millet is found in the organic super protein. Now, P, folks, when I was doing the research on this, I was just blown away. The earliest consumption of peas was at least 23,000 years ago. And some re researchers believe that they have found remnants of peas dated 46,000 years ago. Uh, of course, peas are a very good source of vitamin C, vitamin E, and zinc. And the antioxidants in pea can strengthen your immune system. But there are other nutrients such as vitamin A and vitamin B complex that help reduce inflammation lower our risk of diabetes, heart disease, and arthritis. Peas are a very filling food, and that's mostly due to the high amounts of, of fiber and protein that they contain. I have a six-year-old granddaughter who absolutely loves green peas, and she eats them frozen. That's like a treat. She never wants them cooked. She just loves the way they taste. And truly, they do fill her up for quite a while. Now, the fiber in them, of course, benefits digestion by maintaining that flow of waste through your digestive tract and keeping the gut bacteria healthy. They, too, have a low glycemic index, so that's an important factor for blood sugar control. And, of course, peas are found in our organic super protein. Now, here's a, I love this image of the pomegranate. Pomegranates recently made a splash when researchers found that it may help stop the growth of prostate cancer cells and that the antioxidants in pomegranates are believed to stall the progression of Alzheimer's disease and protect our memory 
while also helping to block the inflammation that contributes to osteoarthritis and cartilage damage. Pomegranate can also reduce inflammation in the gut and improve our digestion. So of course it's beneficial for people with, with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis or any of the inflammatory bowel diseases. Pomegranate also appears to protect the heart and the arteries as the studies have shown that it improves blood flow and helps keep the arteries from getting stiff and thickened. So between the vitamin C and the other immune boosting nutrients like vitamin E, pomegranate can prevent illnesses and fight off infection. They've also been shown to possess antibacterial and antiviral properties in lab studies. They can help reduce the soreness and improve your strength and recovery after exercise. And pomegranate was traditionally used as a remedy for diabetes in the Middle East and in India, as it can help decrease that insulin resistance and lower blood sugar levels. Uh, we talked about um, in the, um, in the what did we call that? The Saturday meeting that we had for Touchstone Essentials, a live meeting where we had pres presentations. Mine was on insulin resistance. And so pomegranate is one of the foods that's very beneficial for that. And it's found in both essentials and in super green juice. Now, pumpkin is believed to have originated in Central America over 7,500 years ago. Pumpkin's really high in vitamins and minerals, and yet it's really low in calories. It's a great source of that beta carotene, which remember, our body converts into vitamin A. And between the vitamin A content and the vitamin C content of pumpkin, it will help to boost our immune system. Its supply of iron and folate can also strengthen our immune system as well. Now, pumpkin has a very high antioxidant content, as do most uh, very colorful plants and foods, but its content way uh, these antioxidant, particular antioxidants can help protect our eyes against sight loss. It can lower our risk of stomach, throat, pancreas, and breast cancers. Now it's a good source of fiber, so it's gonna help suppress our appetite, but pumpkin is also a good source of potassium, which of course has been linked to heart health benefits. It also contains vitamin E, which can keep our skin strong and healthy. So pumpkin is found in super green juice. Now consuming quinoa in America may have occurred somewhere between 3000 and 5000 BC. There are archeological discoveries of quinoa in tombs in Chile and in different regions of Peru. Now remember quinoa is gluten-free, it's high in protein and one of the few plant foods that contains uh, sufficient amounts of all nine of those essential amino acids. It's also high in magnesium, in B vitamins, in iron, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, vitamin E, and all kinds of various beneficial antioxidants. Quinoa is much higher in fiber than most grains. And then numerous studies have shown that it's soluble fiber can help reduce those blood sugar levels, lower cholesterol, increase fullness, and assist with weight loss. Quinoa has a low glycemic index, which is good for blood sugar balance, of course, and it's found in our organic super protein. Raspberry is believed to have originated in Turkey and spread throughout the Mediterranean Europe. In 1771, Britain started shipping red raspberry plants to New York. Raspberries provide potassium, of course, essential to heart function, proven to lower blood pressure. The omega-3 fatty acids in raspberries have been shown to help prevent stroke and heart disease, but they also contain a mineral called manganese, which is necessary for healthy bones and skin and helps to regulate blood sugar. 
Raspberries are very rich in fiber and they're, a one, they're among some of the top sources of antioxidants in our diet, which again, protects our cells from that free radical damage that we'll talk about in January. Raspberries contain vitamin C, which we know is vital to collagen production. And collagen, by the way, is a protein that makes up about 75% of your skin. And it also helps to uh, prevent and repair skin damage from the sun. Now, raspberries found in both essentials and in super green juice. Now, ferment, rice, fermented rice. It originated somewhere between 7,000 and 8,000 BC when people started preparing fermented foods and drinks. Fermented rice is loaded with B-complex vitamins as well as probiotics, which can then restore that healthy intestinal flora to prevent gastrointestinal ailments like duodenal ulcers or ulcerative proctitis or ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, celiac disease, candida, all of those GI things. And the probiotics found in fermented rice can also help prov uh, improve our mental health by easing anxiety and depression, as well as helping us shed those extra pounds that burn our belly fat and help us to lose weight. Now, remember the connection. How would a probiotic work on, on improving our mental health, easing anxiety and depression? Remember, we've talked about this before. It's that brain-gut connection, how our brain is connected to the gut via that vagus nerve so that we have this bi-directional communication. So if we have a healthy gut, it really benefits the brain. Now, of course, besides the B-complex vitamins, um, you also get uh, potassium, magnesium, and selenium from fermented rice. And these minerals help to lower your blood pressure, strengthen your bones. It's also awesome for your hair and skin. Research shows that fermenting rice produces collagen, which again, helps uh, to ensure that your skin maintains its elasticity. Now, the reason fermented rice does a really pretty good job of boosting your immune system is that it's loaded with zinc and iron and vitamin C. And these are the, the nutrients that are basically immune boosting and help keep that sickness at bay. So fermented rice is found in organic super protein. Now, spinach. Spinach is loaded with nutrients and antioxidants. Eating spinach can benefit your eye health. It can help prevent cancer. It can help reduce blood pressure levels. And spinach, of course, is very low in carbs, but high in that insoluble fiber. It's an extremely rich, um, a nutrient-rich vegetable. It packs high amounts of vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K. It also has folate, vitamin B9, iron, and calcium. The antioxidants in spinach are linked to improved eye health, decreasing our risk of cancer and chronic diseases and warding off infection and inflammation. Spinach is found in three of Touchstone Essentials products. It's found in Super Greens Plus D, super green juice, as well as essentials. Historians believe that the strawberry plant was first found in ancient Rome around 234 BC and was commonly used for medicinal purposes. Strawberries are a very good source of vitamin C, of manganese, folate, and potassium. Strawberries can improve the blood antioxidant status, reduce inflammation in the body. They can decrease our risk for heart disease by improving our vascular functioning, improve our blood lipid, the cholesterol profile, and reducing what's called harmful oxidation of the LDL cholesterol. Strawberries seem to slow down glucose digestion and reduce spikes in both glucose as well as insulin following a carb-rich meal. And so 
strawberries are thought to be particularly useful for preventing uh, metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes. There have been a number of studies that suggest that strawberries may help prevent certain types of cancer through their ability to fight that oxidative stress and inflammation. Strawberries are found in super green juice. Archaeologists have found prehistoric remnants of sweet potato in Polynesia from about 1000 AD. They contain fiber, same kind of prebiotic fiber that promotes the growth of that good gut bacteria. And the research has suggested that the antioxidants found in sweet potatoes can protect against certain cancers. They can prevent vision loss and improve eye health. Studies have shown that sweet potatoes may improve our brain health by reducing inflammation and preventing mental decline. They're an excellent source of that beta carotene, which again, we convert into vitamin A to help support our immune system. Sweet potato is found in essentials. Now, tomato. The origins of tomato have been traced back to the early Aztecs around 700 AD. They're a great source of vitamin C, potassium, folate, and vitamin K. Tomatoes are the major dietary source of the antioxidant lycopene, which has been linked to many health benefits, including a reduced risk of heart disease and cancer. Tomatoes show a protective effect on the inner layer of blood vessels called the epithelial cells that can de decrease our risk of blood clotting. Studies have noted that um, there are links between tomatoes and fewer incidents of prostate, lung, and stomach cancers. Tomato is also beneficial for our skin and it can even help protect against sunburn. So tomato is found in super green juice. Finally, wheatgrass. Wheatgrass can be traced back in history over 5,000 years ago to ancient Egypt, where they prized it for its positive effect on their health and vitality. Studies have shown that wheatgrass can help lower blood cholesterol levels, blood sugar levels, and that it can help kill cancer cells and reduce cancer development. One study showed that it may reduce the complications of chemotherapy. Additionally, both human and animal studies have found that wheatgrass may increase satiety and weight loss. So wheatgrass is found in super green juice. Now, I bet you're going to look at foods a little bit differently now when you understand how ancient people use these plants for nourishment and as well as medicine. Um, and that's the reason why Touchstone Essential uses whole plant foods in their products. You get the full benefit of fruits, vegetables, protein, fiber, antioxidants, omega-3 fatty acids, polyphenols, and more by getting the whole plant food. Now imagine, we just covered 30 plants. Imagine trying to prepare those 30 foods on a daily basis in order to get the benefit of these plants. But you really don't have to because Touchstone Essential has taken care of that in just seven simple products. So I'd like to encourage you to view our September 2nd webinar on herbal medicine, if you haven't already done so, in order to get a complete understanding of the plants that make up these amazing products. And folks, that concludes tonight's presentation. We hope you'll join Craig and I next Thursday, December 9th, when we're going to take a look at weight management. Now, I know this topic is quite popular in January every year after all the overeating that occurs during the holidays. I mean, grocery shopping right now is such a challenge. All the sweet treats are everywhere you look. Those once a year things, they're all over the stores and it can be quite tempting. So if you mark your calendars to join us next week, this webinar is going to arm you with the information 
that can help, that you can share with your family, your friends, your downline to help prepare for that post-holiday weight loss that they may have to undergo. So thanks so much for attending tonight and good night, everybody.